Hello beautiful people, welcome to Bab Fashion's YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to be learning how to make this beautiful booboo with balloon sleeves and front patch with fringe. I hope this is something you are interested in learning. Kindly stay tuned while we get right into the video. And please, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please kindly hit on the subscribe button to subscribe. And make sure to put on your notification bell so you get notified once I post a new video. And please feel free to share this video, like this video, leave a comment if you have any. Thank you. So, I'll be making use of this beautiful African print to achieve this project. And I have four yards here, four yards of this fabric. And I also have this leftover fabric, which is a shiny crepe, navy blue, that I'll be using to blend up this color. And I'll be placing it on the chest area. And I also have my fringe. This fringe I have here is about 1.5 yards. That's one and a half yards. This is because I'm going to duplicate it. Can you see that the fringe is a bit scanty? These short ones are usually scanty. So I'm going to duplicate it to achieve the fullness I want to achieve. So that's why I have one and a half yard of this fringe. So now, about how to fold our fabric, and we'll go ahead and start drafting. Our anchor comes in 45 inches in length. So here, 45 inches in length cannot give me the length of my client. Her length is 58. So meaning that I'll have to turn my anchor horizontally to be able to achieve the length of the length of my client. So now I'm going to be using the actual length of the anchor, which is 45 inches, to achieve the width of this bubble. And then I will use the horizontal part to achieve the length of the bubble. So I'm going to fold it and show us what I mean. So this is the length of our Ankara this way. Can you see this is the savage here and this is the savage here. And Ankara comes in 45 inches like I said. So I'm going to fold this 45 inches into two. Can you see? Having folded 45 inches into two. I will have 22.5. Can you see that? So I have 22.5. So next now, I'm going to go ahead because you can see that I already have my width. So next, I'm going to fold to get twice the length of my client. So folding this way, I'm going to make sure that I have twice her length. And her length is 58. So 58 plus 2 inches and then plus 1 inch, that will give me 61 inches. So I'm going to fold over 61 inches like this. So I folded my fabric into four. So this upper one is going to be for the front piece and this will be for the back piece. So here now I have twice the length of my client plus the hemming allowance. I have a hemming allowance of two inches and then plus one inch for my cutting allowance to achieve the shoulder slant. So you can see, so here is my center front and this is the center back. So the first thing now to do is to mark the starting line. This will serve as the shoulder line. So on this starting line, from the center front here, I'm going to mark three inches. And then here at this my 22 inches, which is the width of the fabric, I'll come down by two inches here to achieve the shoulder slant for this bubble. And then I'll use my straight ruler to connect it to this three inches mark I have here. Okay, so now we have our shoulder slant. So next I'm going to come down by the vertical measurement. So from the shoulder line, I'm going to mark the bust point. So this is the bust line, 11 inches, the waistline, 16 inches, the hip line is 24 inches. And then of course the full length is 58 plus heading allowance of 2 inches. So I'll straighten my lines. So I haven't straightened my lines. So 
So on the bust line, I'm going to enter quarter of the bust measurement. So quarter of the bust measurement is 10 inches. And then I'll add 2.5 inches. On the waistline, I'll enter quarter of the waist measurement, which is 9 inches plus 2.5 inches. And then on the hip line, I'll enter quarter of the hip measurement, which is 44 inches, which is 11 inches plus 2.5 inches. So at the hem line now, whatever I have on the hip line, I'm going to add 2 inches to it and place it on the hem line. So here I have 13.5. So I'm going to add 2 inches to this 13.5 and that will give me 15.5. I'll place it on the hem line. So I'll bring in my straight ruler to connect the points. So I'll connect from bust to waist, from waist to hip, and then from hip to the hem. So now we have done this part. So next we want to achieve the sleeve. So to achieve the sleeve, on this bust line, I'm going to come down by 1.5 inches on this side diagonally. So can you see the way I'm placing my tape? I'm coming, see this is where the bust line is. This is where the measurement of the bust is. So I'm coming out by 1.5 inches diagonally like this. Just slant your tape like this. So having done that now, I'm going to connect this 1.5 inches to the waistline like this. You see that? So then at this point where I have the length of the sleeve, I'm going to remember I used from center to 22.5 inches. This is where, and so this will extend to around here below her elbow. So this is what we are using. This is half of the shoulder measurement plus the desired sleeve length. So let me explain it this way. Half of my client's shoulder measurement is 8 inches. So this is where my 8 inches ends from the center front here. So from here now, you can see that this is the sleeve length, which is 15 inches. Okay? And so 15 inches is below the elbow length because the elbow is 13 inches. So 15 is below it. So now from the shoulder slant here, from the shoulder slant here, I'm going to come down by 11 inches. From the shoulder slant, I came down by 11 inches. So here now I have my 11 inches. So I'm going to connect this curve I have here, this 1 inch, 1.5 inches diagonal curve I have here. I'm going to connect it to this point. Can you see? So now this is going to be our sleeve. So we're going to have that gathering effect here. Remember that this is 11 inches. So 11 on one side, 11 on the other side, that will give us 22 inches. So we can have the gathers to achieve the balloon sleeve. Okay? So having done that, next I'll come here now to mark the neck depth. So the neck depth for the back is 1 inch. So from the shoulder line here now, marking the neck depth. And then the neck width for the back is 4 inches. So I'm going to curve out my neckline. Then next I'm going to mark the neck depth for the front. Of course, the neck width for the front is also 4 inches. So the neck depth for the front is 7 inches. And I want to have a V-neckline, so I'm just going to place my pattern master this way and then connect it like this. So this is our V-neckline. So now we are done with our drafting. So on this shoulder line, I'm just going to come up by half inch. This half inch will be for joining the shoulder of the front and the back together. So I'll just go up by half of an inch. So, 
So this is my half inch I'll be using to join the shoulders together. So remember that we have our front and back together. So and the for back neckline is higher. So I'm going to cut for the back first and then show us how to cut the front neckline. So first I'm going to start with the shoulder slant here. So you can see I'm cutting on my half inch. So we'll go ahead and cut the back neckline now, which is one inch. You see that? So then we can as well cut the shoulder and the V neckline now. You can see I'm separating the back from the front. So I'm just going to cut on the front neckline alone. Can you see? So now we have our front neckline and we have the back neckline. So I'm just going to cut this side out now. So can you see what we have? So having cut out this side, this is what our gown looks like. So I'm going to cut out this savage because we don't need the savage. So here we have. Okay. So now we have our front and back. So the next thing now we're going to do is to cut the fabric we're going to place on the neckline to achieve that design we have on the neckline. So I'm going to separate the front from the back. So this is our back piece. And then I'm going to fold my fabric into two like this. So here the width of my fabric is the fold. The width of the fabric I folded is 8.5. So you want it to just stop exactly at the shoulder tip. So remember I said my client's shoulder measurement is, is 8, um, sorry, I said my client's shoulder measurement is 16 inches. So half of 16 is 8 inches. So you can see I placed my fabric on fold. I'll press it down. And then I'll bring in the front piece and place it over it like this. And then I'll go ahead and trace out the neckline and the shoulder slant first. Can you see? Just going ahead to trace out what I have here. So now we have the width of the fabric. So to achieve the length, from this V neckline I have here, I'm going to come down by two inches from the V neckline. This is the end of the neckline. So I'll come down by two inches. And then I'm going to mark it. I'm just going to draw a straight line like this. And then I'll connect it to this shape that I have here. Okay, so here now what I have here, the width I have here is seven inches. So what I did is the shoulder measurement, remember I said the shoulder measurement is eight inches, half of it is eight inches. So all I did was to just come in by one inch. I don't want it to be straight, I want it to be a bit slanted. So that is why I came in by one inch and I have seven inches. And I connected it back to my eight inches. So it's that simple. So I'm going to go ahead now and cut it out. You see? So this is what I'm going to have in front of the bubble. So by the time I fold in half inch this way, and I fold in half inch this way, I'm going to be left with 
13 at this down part. Remember, it was 7 on fold, so which made it 14. So by the time I fold half inch here, half inch here, I'll be left with 13. And when I fold half inch here, half inch here, I'll be left with 15 at this point, okay? So let me show us how I'm going to place it. Now this is my front neckline. On the right side like this, I'm going to place it, making sure that it's aligning with the center front. And then I'm going to fold in half inch this way. So to do this, you need your hemming gum. This will help keep it intact and in place. So I have my hemming gum here. So I'll bring in my iron. So this half inch I folded in like this. I'm going to press it down with my steam iron. I want to make sure that it is well relaxed. I pressed down this side with my half inch. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side. I'll fold in half inch also like this. Then I'll press it down. So you need to confirm that your half inch is correct because you don't want one side to be wider than the other. So here from here I have 3.5. I also have the same thing at this point, okay? I have a little less than that, so I'm just going to adjust it. So now I have my 3.5 at this point. So I want to make sure that they are equal. So now from the center front also, I'm going to measure what I have here. I have 6.5, remember it was seven. So I have 6.5. So from the center front also at this side, I'm measuring and you can see I have the same 6.5. So I'm going to make sure to press it down very well and I'll show us the next thing to do. Okay. So now having pressed it down, I'm going to go ahead now and fold this part, the down part in by half inch. So I'm going to fold it in this way by half inch. So as you can see, I'm done folding the hem here. So I'm going to measure what I have here now. So you can see now that I now have 13 and 3 quarter. Remember that we had 14. And when I folded half inch, half inch, it gave me 13 inches. So by the time after I folded the half inch upwards now, so of course, as it is going higher, it's becoming wider. So that is why I now have 13 and quarter. So now I'll bring in my fringe. Um, 13 and 3 quarter, I beg your pardon. So I'll bring in my fringe and fold it to achieve this 13 and 3 quarter. So this is my 13 and 3 quarter here. And then I'll fold again to achieve another 13 and 3 quarter. And then I'll fold over again like this. So I have another 13 and 3 quarter. So you can see that what I have left here will not give me up to 13 and 3 quarter. I'm just going to cut at this point here. You see? So I'm going to place this fringe underneath this. Can you see that? I'm going to be placing it under this fabric I have here. But before I will do that, I'm going to use my hemming gum to hold down these areas so that they will not shift. But while placing my hemming gum, I'll make sure that I leave two inches as I'll stop around two inches before the end, two inches before the end. I have pressed my fabric and you can see that my hemming gum is holding it down so it can no longer recall. So and you see, you notice I left some space which is about two inches from here. So I'm going to place my fringe underneath this point. But before I place my fringe underneath this point, I'm going to stitch this fringe together. 
this is so that all three of them can become one so that it's easier to work with so i'm going to stitch them together and come back and show us so i've stitched my fringe the three layers together you can see now no one can actually shift anymore okay so everything is now intact so now the next thing i'm going to do is to place my hemming gum for placing so the next thing i'm going to do is to place my hemming gum on the fabric but before placing the hemming gum from here where i have remember i came up by two inches that's i placed my hemming gum up to two inches away from the hemline so here now this is where my two inches is so from this point where i have the hemming gum holding down the fabric i'm going to come down by one inch this is just to okay i'm going to come down i'm going to come down by 1.5 inches and then i'll also come down by 1.5 inches on this side i'm going to use a straight line to connect it And then I'll go ahead and place my hemming gum on this 1.5 inches line. I'll place it like this. Can you see? So having placed it that way now, I will bring in my fringe and make sure that my fringe is on this line that I marked. Can you see that? I'll make sure that my fringe is on this line that I marked here. You see? So next I'm going to bring in another hemming gum. And then place it on top of the fringe like this. Can you see? I have hemming gum underneath and then I have it on top. Then I'll go ahead and close up my fabric like this. So you want to make sure that your fabric is completely covering the tip of your fringe. And you see what I have here? Can you see? So it's completely covering it. So now you need enough steam. Make sure that your iron is releasing steam. Press it down. So now what I'll be doing to this side, I'm going to stitch this down. I'll be stitching it very close to the tip here 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 and then this way because our hemming gum is not permanent so if you don't stitch it down it will it will eventually rip off and everything will be in a mess so you just want to make sure that you stitch it down to secure it so the essence of this hemming gum is to make your work neat and easy so that everything will be intact so the next thing we're going to do now is to cut the band we'll be attaching on the balloon sleeve Okay, so I cut the fabric for the band, and here I have a fabric on fold of three inches. So you can see it is on fold. You can see that it's four and um, six inches, and when it is on fold, it's three inches. And the width of my fabric is sixteen inches. So this is the round elbow circumference of my band. A round elbow measurement is thirteen inches. So I have 1.5 inches seam allowance, that's side seam allowance. So that's why I have three inches here. So that's 16 inches and I have two of them. So this is where we're gathering the balloon sleeve to. Remember that our balloon, the width of our sleeve is 22 inches. So we'll be gathering it to this 13 inches we have here. So now the next thing I'm going to do is to cut my lining and then I'll show us the next thing to do. Lining. This is for the back and it is two inches shorter than the main fabric. I also repeated the same thing for the front. My lining is also two inches shorter. So this is what I've done already. I've gone ahead to stitch 
my to stitch my fabric can you see as i stitch this fabric i have here so you just want to make sure that you top stitch it on the ankara directly you don't want to top stitch it alongside with the lining this will make your work neat and and relaxed so this is what i have here i've not even pressed it and it's this neat so i'll keep that aside so the next thing we're going to be doing now is to cut our pockets and i'll be using this leftover fabric i cut from the side to achieve the pocket so at this side my fabric is in four places you can see one two three four okay so i'm just going to place my hand and draw a shape like this okay so this is what i want to achieve you want to make sure that this side that is straight is about six to seven inches so once i have seven inches or yes yeah, seven inches that's fine so from this seven inches here i'm going to come in by one inch like this and then I'll also come in by one inch like this. Can you see? And then I'll just create a curve like this. You want to make sure that your hand can sit in the pocket, okay? So, and then I'll go ahead and cut it out. You see? So this is the downside of the pocket and this is the upper side. You can see this one inch I have here. So you want to make sure that you have this shape because this is the part you'll be stitching to the to the gown or to the boohoo. And I have four pieces. Two will be for one side and two will be for the other side of the pocket. So now we are done with the cutting aspect. So now it's time for us to start sewing our pieces together. And it's not going to take time. It's really going to be simple. So I'm going to place my lining. This is the uh, front piece. I want to make sure that you shift your print very well and then i'll place my lining on the right side of my fabric like this you want to use your pins to secure it and then i'll stitch this b neckline i'll sew in a b shape i'm going to repeat the same thing for the front and then i'll join the shoulders together and come back and show us the next thing to do so to stitch our pieces together i'll be starting with the front piece so i'm going to place the lining on the right side of my front piece like this i'll stitch the neckline in a v shape i'll be sewing on half inch so i'll do that on the neckline and then on the hemline i'm going to stitch the lining and the main fabric together on half inch also at the hem here And see them? So I'll stitch together at the hem here. So, and then I'll also go ahead and stitch the sides. When you are stitching the side, before you be stitching the side, remember that our fabric is longer. So, this is what you are going to have. The fabric will now turn this way. Okay? So, I'll now stitch the sides here like this, all the way to this side, to this point where I have the sleeve opening. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side. But I won't be stitching the sleeve opening. So I'll do that and then join the shoulders together and come back and show us the next thing to do. So I've stitched my shoulders together. And this is what I have here also. So you can see what it looks like from the inside. And I've also gone ahead to press it. So now it's time for us to fix our band. So for the band now, this is what I have. At this part, I have 14.5 inches, and then at this part, I have 13 inches. So this is what I did. I reduced this side a little. Remember that we cut it straight. I reduced this side a little because as the hand is coming down, of course, it is narrowing down. So that is why I have 13 inches here, and I have 14.5 here. So this part will be the part that will be stitched to the lace. Okay, and you can see I sewed on quarter inch here, quarter inch here, and then I turned it out like this. So take note that this part is on fold. So this is what we have. So I'm going to pin this band now to the that's to the sleeve opening I have here. So as you can see, I've gathered my sleeve opening to the 14 inches I have here. Can you see? So I gathered it to 14.5 inches. So I'm going to pin my band to it. So 
So this is what I'm going to have by the time I stitch them together. I was stitching on half inch this way and then the band will turn down this way. So I'm going to also pin on the other side. I also gathered it up to 14.5 inches. So I'll pin it on the other side and stitch it and come back and show us. Sewing the band and this is what I have. I used bias to tape the rough part. I don't have light to weave so that's why I used bias. So just to make sure that my work is neat. So now the next thing I'm going to do now is to mark where the pocket will be. So I'm just going to fold my fabric now into two like this, right side facing right side. So this is the shoulder line here. So from this shoulder line, I'm going to place my tape from the shoulder line here, from the upper part of the shoulder here, and then I'm going to mark on 16.5 inches, which is her waistline. So from this 16.5 inches, so this actually depends on the height of the person. Sometimes you can use 18, 17, but this person is not tall. So that is why I'm using this 16.5 inches. So I want the pocket to start from the waistline. So this is where my 16.5 inches is. So from this 16.5 inches, I'm going to come down by six inches from the side here. So this is how big I want the pocket opening to be, six inches here. Can you see that? I'm going to mark the same thing on the other side. So now, having done that, the next thing I'm going to do is to mark the seam allowance I'll be sewing on, the side sewing allowance. Remember I added 2.5 inches to when I was drafting. So, and I already used half inch to turn my lining. So the essence of that extra half inch is to turn my lining. So now I'll be stitching on one inch. So I'm going to mark one inch all the way from the sleeve opening here, one inch. one inch all the way to the hem of the gown so i'm going to mark it and repeat the same thing on the other side i'll show us what to do so as you can see i've marked my one inch all the way from the sleeve opening up to this point can you see and then i stopped at this point and then skipped from here to my six inches and then i went ahead and continued marking my one inch all the way down this is because this is where I'm going to sew my pocket to. So now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stitch from here to this point and stop. And then I'll start stitching again from here down to the hem, leaving the space open. I'll repeat the same thing on the other side. So now for the pocket, here's what I'll be doing. I'm going to place them right side facing right side for two. You see? So right side facing right side, and I'll stitch on half inch like this. In a curve, I'm just following the curve like this. So take note of where the stitch is starting from. I won't be starting from this part that I have here. Remember the shape I created when we were cutting the pocket. I won't be stitching from this one inch that I have here. Okay, so my stitch will start away from the one inch this way. I'll sew it up to this point and then stop one inch away from the opening here. And then when I'm done, I'll turn it to the wrong, to the right side. Remember that it's right side facing right side. Then I'll turn it to the right side and top stitch it. And then I'll show us what to do. I'm going to repeat it for the same, the second one too. And then I'll show us how to fix it to the gown. So, I'm done stitching the sides of the gown, and this is the opening for the pockets. You can see, my stitch went all the way down, and I repeated the same thing here. I left the opening of the pocket. So now this is our pocket, and you can see that I've also top stitched it. I first of all stitched from the right side facing right side, and then I turned it inside out, and I top stitched like I already explained. 
So you can see this notch. Can you see that I didn't stitch this part? So all I need to do now is to fold this half inch inward like this and fold it again inwards like this. Can you see? So I fold it inward, bring in my pressing iron and press this part down. And I'll also repeat the same thing on this side. This half inch I have here, I'm going to bring it inwards like this and press it down. You can see what I have now. So this is what I'm going to do. This part that is opened, I'm going to place it now. This is how it is. This part that is opened, I'm going to place it here. Remember that I came down by six inches. The opening I have here is six inches. But here I have above six inches. And you see that I have about seven inches here. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to place it this way, making sure that it's starting from that it's going it's above where the stitch stopped here. So I just want to make sure that it's above that's where I'm placing the pocket is a little above where the stitch stopped from the upper part. So I'm going to place the first one. And also take note of the way I'm placing. Can you see that this part is the down part? And this is the upper part. You can see the part of the pocket that is falling. You see also it's falling. So this is the down part. So I'm going to place it this way. Like half of an inch above the where the stitch stopped. So you can see I'm folding my excess. I'll just fold it in like this. This is to cover up this this um, allowance i have here so you just fold it in like this and then place your pocket here and then having pinned it at that point at this point here also i'm going to fold it in a little like this and then place it at this point So take note now that it's stopping below where my stitch stopped for at. And you see, this is where my stitch stopped and it's stopping below it. So I'm also going to pin this part too down like that. So as you can see, I've pinned it down and I've also pinned down this part. So you can see how the pocket, the down part is dropping down. This is so that your hand can sit well inside the pocket. And this is what I have here too at the other side. Can you see? So I'm going to stitch it only to the seam allowance. You can see I pinned it to the seam allowance. So I'm going to stitch it to the seam allowance. I'm going to repeat the same thing on this side. And then of course I'll repeat the same thing on this side. Then I'll give it a very good press and I wear it on the mannequin so that we can see the final outcome. So here is the final outcome of our gown and it came out really beautiful. I went ahead to stone the patch fabric with my stones and I also did the same thing on the band of the sleeve. So you can see that this has added beauty to it. I enjoyed making this gown. I hope you enjoyed watching and you learned something from this video. If you did, please kindly give me a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and also make sure to subscribe to my channel. And do not forget to put on your notification bell so you get notified once I post a new video. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.